It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Folks, uh, it's that time again. We've got Senator Mark Johnson is uh, on the phone with us. Uh, Senator Johnson, how are you, sir? I'm great. Good morning, Paul. Good morning to you, sir. Now, uh, the, you're uh, District 15. Remind everybody where District 15 is. Well, we only have a half hour, but I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, it is uh, <laughs> much of Faulkner County, excluding the city of Conway and the city of uh, Polonia, the east side there. So I have north and south of Conway. I also have uh, northwest West Pulaski County, so I have part of Maumelle and all of the Ferndale area, West Pulaski County where I live. Most of uh, Perry County, all of Conway County, yes. and about the middle third of Van Buren County. So I go from Ferndale, west of Little Rock, all the way to north of Clinton. So it's wow. a big, mostly rural district. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, so, Senator Johnson, I really appreciate you coming on, Mark, and, and, and talking to us and giving us your impression of the session. So let's just start generally. Senator Mark Johnson, what was your impression of the session 2019? Well, we we did some things we should have done and could have done, and we, we cut some taxes. We raised some other taxes, although I think the, the taxes that we raised, I think we can ca almost call user fees. Uh, we, we increased the tax on cell phones, the 911 service fee, which was to, as far as I'm concerned, one of the biggest bang for the buck things that uh, the consumer could get by paying an extra 60, 60 cents a month, uh, it could potentially save your life with the modern technology related to 911. Uh, we reduced income taxes. Uh, we did raise uh, highway taxes, and we also referred to the voters the opportunity to raise them even more. And I actually believe, talking to people, at least in my district, that people are going to support that. Uh, Paul, I have a, I'm going to call it a trophy. I don't know if it's probably most people would think of it as one, but uh, I have the lower control arm uh, came off of my car because I hit a pothole big enough to break the control arm. And uh, I got to thinking how much gasoline tax I would have to pay to equal the uh, cost of the repair uh, on that lower control arm. So it, it's a reminder to me that... Uh, uh, not taking care of our roads uh, costs as well as uh, as taking care of them. So I, I, I believe we, we did the right thing in that regard. Most importantly, we cut our income taxes, both corporate and individual. And we especially, uh, of course, the, the left likes to talk about, well, you're really cutting it on the rich. Well, we'd already done the middle class and the low income tax cuts in previous years. And uh, uh, it, it, I believe, will be a big thing in making Arkansas competitive with our neighboring states that we, we cut our income tax uh, eventually to the top rate of 5.9%. Uh, you know, we're competing with Texas and Tennessee that don't even have personal income taxes. And uh, I've always said that if, uh, if you want to know what difference it makes, go look at the Toyota truck plant in San Antonio and realize that probably but for the Arkansas income tax, that plant would be in Marion, Arkansas right now. So uh, it, it's a, it was a... Uh, I gave the, the session a B plus. There were some things I wanted I didn't get. Uh, my most important one being the uh, legislation to uh, uh, take pensions away from uh, uh, public officials that commit crimes in the line of duty. So yeah, yeah and, let, let, uh, let's let's go there. I I, I do want to come back uh, to, to some of the tax stuff, but yeah, let, let's talk about that because that was an effort uh, to try to do something about the the corruption. Uh, you know, exactly. we've seen a lot of, uh, of corruption, former uh, senators and, you know, going to jail or being indicted. So why, why didn't, that was a really good, I thought, uh, you know, disincentive to steal from the people if you lose your government pension, if you're convicted of a crime. But why didn't that pass, Mark? Well, uh, there were a couple of reasons. The most important one being that uh, uh, it, it literally did get lost in the bureaucratic gobbledygook. Uh, the the uh, retirement committee retains an actuary, and I always thought the actuary's job was to kind of run the math to make sure that uh, the people that are going to retire and the people that are paying in, it all balances out. The investments are doing well. Uh, in this case, the actuary uh, raised the specter of, of our pension plan being uh, uh, jeopardized by the Internal Revenue Service because of a, of a bill like this. I thought at the time it was bogus. 
I think it's still bogus, and uh, I plan on continuing to fight for this. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, there are over 20 states, I forget the, the number keeps growing, that have done something similar to this. And uh, I, I simply plan on, on bringing it up. As a matter of fact, this Friday, uh, <clears throat> we have an interim study committee of a uh, meeting of, of retirement committee, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the uh, – uh, it's, what, it's what's called a, uh, an interim study proposal, which is basically we refer to Bill – to interim study and the committee's going to study it, but hopefully we can can flesh this thing out a lot better and uh, have more time to answer some of the objections that might be, and it's even some legitimate objections that might have been raised. You know, Paul, the retirement committee is a joint committee and it only meets once a week. Well, if you uh, miss your window or you have to tweak a bill, then you're you've lost at least a week of the session. And and I found myself at the end after agreeing to make my bill one of the, uh, uh, or part of my bill, I actually split it into two parts, part of my bill to be part of the agreed uh, uh, bipartisan leadership uh, effort on ethics, which I think was reported in the paper, only about half those bills passed. So yeah. uh, we had our work cut out and, and on that issue, and for a number of reasons, I'll take uh, – uh, my share of the blame for it. We didn't get it done, but I'm not giving up on this one. Well, I, I, Senate to interim study. We're going to study it until we get it passed. You know, it's good. It's good that uh, you're, you're not giving up on that. I I, I found the the uh, charging of uh, Medicaid uh, uh, provider uh, uh, Brazel or Basil mm-hmm. or, or is her name. You know, she was uh, recently charged, uh, pled not guilty. Uh, you know, by the state of Arkansas and. Uh, I saw that in the paper. Then I also saw that the, the Dem guys reported that she was testifying before a Senate committee like six weeks ago. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, we've got we still do have what appears to be a corruption problem uh, out there. And we need to uh, you know, we need to keep pursuing this. So I'm, I'm glad that you're not going to give up on that. And I, I know you would. I know this was a priority before the session. Um, we're talking with Senator Mark Johnson. This is his, his impression of the session, uh, 2017. Now, I, I'd like to go back on taxes because I'd, I'd like to ask you a question on that. I, I understand, you know, the arguments from from those that voted for the gas tax increase, that, that voted for the, the continuation of the half cent sales tax that's set to expire, or, or referring it to the people. I understand the argument. Roads were bad. We got to have money. They're they're going to get so bad that it's going to cost even more to fix them. Uh, I under, I understand that. Um, this conversation though was had, from what I can tell, without any discussion, legitimate discussion of finding savings elsewhere. Um, so my so address that, and also if you could answer, do you think that when it's all said and done, fiscal year twenty twenty, fiscal year twenty twenty one, do you think the people of Arkansas? will be paying more to the government than before you you guys had your recent session? Well, Paul, let me answer it this way. I think in the short run, we're going to see some some things that we're paying more to the government. But I think in the long run, we're going to start seeing some things kick in, including the 5.9%, where we're paying less to the government. Now, uh, part of that is going to be because simply the economy is doing well, and we have some some triggers that can allow things to... uh, other revenue sources to start to phase out. Uh, of course, the gas, the uh, grocery tax is is pretty well gone. I'd like to see it completely gone. And I, to all my friends that, that like the one eight cent conservation tax, I don't think that was good policy in the first place to put that in the Constitution. Even though it, good things are done with it, uh, I think that we should take that off the, the groceries too. I don't think there should be any tax on groceries at all, and we should. Uh, implement that as soon as we can. Uh, uh, bottom line to your question, I think that uh, uh, we're in the middle of something, and I think it's something that, that, that the rest of the, the General Assembly needs to step up to. Yes, we've done the things on the tax side, and I hope in 2021 we start doing some things on the spending side. Okay. Uh, we did, uh, there is a, uh, and, that, and that's the thing. I mean, yeah, we, we, you know, we've got, look, we just had a tremendous uh, month of, uh, of April, and of course, that's when people pay their income tax. But the, the revenue projections were way up. Uh, the revenue, actual revenue, was way above projection uh, in April, which shows that you know, thank you, President Trump, for the tax cuts nationally. That yep. The economy's doing well, 
and I'd like to see that. If if we have the same uh, response to the tax cuts from Arkansas that we've had nationally, then we're going to see uh, uh, plenty of revenue to run the state, and we can start cutting some some uh, uh, spending. I mean, some some real things. And I'm I'm not. I mean, I don't expect a huge amount from this, but I do believe we will see some savings from, from the governor's transformation. Uh, uh, I don't think it's the panacea to fix state government by any means, but it's a step in the right direction, and I appreciate him doing it. I told him when he asked me how I stood on it, I just made it simple. I said, Governor, you're the head of the executive branch. Uh, within certain parameters, I think you ought to be able to organize it as you wish. But uh, uh, he believes it will result in some efficiencies and uh, certainly uh, not having every small agency have their own HR department and their own uh, accounting department uh, can can uh, result in some some just plain old efficiency savings and I hope we see that Paul. well I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up you know I mean I I hope uh, that the governor's transformation I think I hope it works well yeah I hope I also hope that it saves money you know and 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 time will tell um, you know, I, I'm also, uh, uh, you know, glad that you brought up the record revenue because that that was one. And I, I know hindsight's 2020, Mark. We're talking with Senator Mark Johnson. I really appreciate yeah. you coming on. I know hindsight's 2020. But when I saw it, when I saw <laughs> that the the there was a hundred and twenty five million dollars over projection, I think it was like a total of nine hundred fifty eight million for the month of April. But that was one hundred and twenty five million over uh, what they had anticipated. I thought, well, the gas tax increase three cents, six cents was to raise $95 million, and here is $125 million. And I thought, wow, you know, I mean, I know you can't necessarily, we didn't know that was going to happen, but there were some people that said, you know, we can pay for our roads if we'll just take the revenue increases and, and kind of pay as we go. Well, but, you you know, you have to have a stable uh, amount of uh, highway revenue, and that's considered special revenue. And the general revenue that you're referring to uh it, it's the, it's the stuff that can go more up and down. It, it fluctuates more, and sometimes those revenues have been below projection. So, uh, yes, you're right. And, and Paul, while I know I'm old-fashioned in this regard, I would like to see us uh, have people that drive cars or buy cars, and you know, we, we buy gasoline. And of course, now we we even uh, added electric cars, had an additional registration fee, basically to pay the fact that electric cars don't use any fuel thus don't pay their share of, of road taxes. So, uh, uh, but to, I've always looked at that as a, as a, a, uh, a user fee. Uh, we don't have toll roads in Arkansas. We tax you generally at the gas pump uh, to pay for the roads. And I, I like to see us doing that. And I'd like to see us not uh, continue to, to move in the direction of using general revenue for, for highways, simply because it's not a stable uh, actual form of uh, of revenue and you know Paul, we can laugh we can talk about all these taxes and this one and that one but really truly the question is is government taking it out of your left pocket your right pocket your shirt pocket or your front pocket yes. i'd like to see us reduce the overall tax burden on the people and by the only way we're really going to do that in the long run is to start raining reining in uh the cancer of spending in state government it's just the most natural thing on earth for, for government to grow and we have to make a concerted effort to start to, to reel it in and, and i i think that's something you'll see more of as, as we move forward i know that uh, uh a lot of members of the general assembly I, you've probably heard uh, uh lieutenant governor griffin talk about what he calls the toe tax the old way mm -hmm. and 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 he believes that uh by just implementing some uh, common sense savings in spending that uh, we can reduce the overall cost to government without burdening and, and, and actually give the people a significant tax relief and, and without costing us any services, just doing it he said a new way and a more efficient way rather than what he calls the old way. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe we'll see, maybe we'll see that in the future. Uh, last question, uh, the, towards the very end of the session, probably uh, a pretty big controversy where we actually saw the left be the radical left had to do with sanctuary cities. Uh, the governor signed it. Uh, that was a good thing. What were your thoughts on how that all played out? Well, I was really pleased to see that. That was Senator Stubblefield's bill, and, yeah. and he worked really hard on it. Had to go back to the 
House committee a second time. I was over there uh, when he took it to the House committee the first time, and uh, I was really, really proud of the work he did on it. And, and frankly, after the left came in and flexed their muscle a little bit in committee, uh, the conservatives, and I'm going to give uh, uh, the conservative leadership, the Speaker and others in the House, uh, Representative Richmond came forth and 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 came back and flexed their muscle, got people in that committee, which is hard to do, the afternoon meetings, the last few days of the session, got that bill out, got it on the floor and passed it. I was, was thrilled with that and uh, uh, it, it needed to be done. Uh, but, you know, it's funny, Paul, since the session's over, I'm, I've mellowed out. At first, I was upset about some things we didn't get done, including, you know, my, my retirement uh, bill. But uh, had another bill that was important to me. It was to try to protect our monuments around the state. Yeah. And I got it out of the Senate, but I failed to get it out of House committee. There was a lot of uh, concern that it might affect what cities could do moving up a broken water line goes under a monument. And, I, and I'm going to take the full blame for that. I tried to cast that net a little too broadly. Uh, and again, that's another one I'm sent to interim study. I'm going to work on a bill that uh, will protect these monuments uh, without uh, uh, jeopardizing any work that, that uh, localities need to do. And again, that uh, I just kind of ran out of time on that one. Yeah. And I, uh, maybe I can chalk that up to being a freshman, though I really don't... Uh, no, uh, you're not. I a don't lean on that Mark, very often. Mark, <laughs> Senator, this was your first term, but then you were not a freshman uh, for sure because of your uh, your your vast knowledge and experience. Uh, Senator Mark Johnson, been a pleasure, sir. Thank you for uh, giving us some time this morning. We appreciate your thoughts. And thank you, Paul, and, and give my best to my friend Senator Flippo. I understand is going to be coming on later. Yeah, Senator Flippo coming yeah. up here in a few minutes, 10 minutes. So, right. all right. Thanks, right. Thank you so much. All righty. Bye-bye. Folks, we're going to take a break. Reset.